Okay, in this tutorial, we're going to talk about not only script writing for broadcast in Inception, but also a very important part of broadcast, which would be the rundown, uh, also known as a running orders. In fact, that's what Inception calls it. Basically, a running order or a rundown is just a grid-like view of all the stories that are going to be a part of your show. Um, so you could see here, this is an example from a halftime report, uh, that we did, you know, um, and each line is a different story that's in the broadcast. You could see if there's an anchor assignment, who's assigned to write it. Uh, there could be some kind of with, um, time of how long it took to do, etc. So it's a lot of information here when you're doing a broadcast. Now, if you double click on the icon itself, you can see what opens up is the script that's a part of that line. So this is a script part with the uh, the anchor listed who's going to be talking, the camera you're going to be using for this particular um, shot, and then the script that's going to go to the teleprompter. And over on the right side is the graphic that's going to be used for the show. So I'll click on that to see what it looks like. And that's the graphic that'll be also sent to the um, graphics system we have in the studio as well. So you can see this is very powerful. It has a lot to offer. We're going to break it down step by step into not only do you how to write a script, but also about the rundown process itself. Okay, we're going to start with uh, broadcast script writing here in the running orders manager, um, also more commonly known as a rundown. Click on that first, and you'll see you'll have all the folders for your classes on the left side. Now, what you want to name your folder is the name of the show and the date you're working the show on. Because this is going to be collaborative, everybody needs a place of where they're going to save their work. So I'm going to go to the demo files, and over here I'm going to create a new folder. And I'm going to call this test show date and year. Okay, so now that I have the test show date and year, we now know where people who are going to collaborate with us can also save their work. So when you create a rundown, you're kind of creating the place for everybody to write their stories too, because a broadcast, for instance, is just a list of stories stacked on top of each other. So we're going to create the running order, which is kind of starts off our spreadsheet for this. Now, uh, I'll go through templates in a second, but I want to just call for our name for now. We'll keep templates none. And I'm going to put this test show. Our start date um, would be the date that your show is due. So I'm saying I'm going to have ours due on January 31st. We're going to, our class is going to be done by, let's say, 5 p.m. I'll say done. Okay. Um, end date, you could leave blank. Duration, if your show is specific to time, you could put in a duration, you know, by putting in minutes and seconds, like four minutes, zero seconds. I would leave this checked off unless you're doing something specifically for live, and it's going to have to be done to exact time. Uh, this is not necessary for right now. Duration isn't even necessary for this moment, too, but just want to show you what that's put in. But what is necessary is going to MOS devices. This is automation to um, equipment that's in our TV studio. So QScript is the teleprompter program that we use um, to send your script to teleprompter when it's ready. You want to check that off. Ross Expression is our graphics system. You also want to check that off as well. Okay. So once this is all set and done, you click OK. And now you'll see you have the running order here in the folder. And here is the running order for the show. And you can see right now it says no stories because you haven't created any stories yet. But you've created the place of where people can write their stories to. So right now you can start with create story. So let's say I create a broadcast story. I'll click again in the slug, hit the space bar, and I could say this is the cold open. Now, I know being the producer of the show, for instance, or the assignment editor for the show, um, there's going to be a series of different stories I'm going to need to have for this. So, again, I'm just creating lines like a spreadsheet, create a new story for a broadcast. I could say this is story one. So, you got an example. Hit enter. And I'll create another story for broadcast again. And I'll do story two. 
Now, cold open is the way we open our show, so we really want to kind of move that to the top of our list. So we've got to drag it, let go, and there it is. So when I have a story uh, put in the line here, I can now click on the icon here and now start to write the story. So I'm going to double click on the um, icon for the little old-fashioned TV. There's a title of my uh, slug, which is, a sto which is a story title, cold open. I want more real estate than this to write, so I'm going to left-click on the title. While I'm holding my click, I drag it to the right. And then I kind of move the margin a little bit so I could see some more. Since this is the rundown I'm creating for today's show, I don't need to see the running orders manager anymore. I even click that up and create some more real estate if I have to. So that way, all I'm looking at is the story titles of the show and then the script. And now we're going to start going into the specifics of writing a script. All right, so we're going to write the script for our cold open here. So it's fairly straightforward, you know, kind of like a welcome to the show. Um, you can see here, everything looks pretty similar to a um, word processing program, except for a few notable uh, differences, which I'll show you right now. There's what's called a production queue. So production queue would be the name of the anchor, if there's a specific camera it's being used, um, if you're playing any media, how long is that, if you're taking a package or a VO or a VOSOT. These are all cues so you'll know as you create your show, um, you know, live or live to tape, what needs to come next so the producer could make the show run smoothly. So there's production queue. There's notes, where if you just want to leave a note in it but not have it go to the teleprompter, you could click on that and it becomes blue. And then SOT, which means sound on tape. This would be the um, quote that you're using as part of a video if you're going to have an anchor write or talk into a sound on tape for further context. Okay, but let's start with this cold open first. So uh, my production queue, I'm going to have, first put anchor. Now I'm going to hit the space bar and backspace to kick. So I want to make sure this is red. This is very important for the teleprompter part. Your text is in red. So I put anchor. I'm going to put my name, Phil. And production queue. I know I'm going to come on a center camera in a studio and call that camera two. So the anchor is me, camera two set up there. And now I could say, welcome to today's test show. Really brief. Okay, so right now I have the anchor, camera two, that way we know what's going on in the show. And then what I'm going to be saying as the anchor, welcome to today's show. Okay, when I'm done, I have to click save. This is, does not save automatically. So you see that little red dot there? It means changes have been made that are not done. Click save. Now you'll notice this now turned red because there's actually text here. There's um, an anchor spot right there. I could actually, if I chose to just put, instead of the word anchor there, I could just put fill. Get rid of that. And it's save. You can see the anchor right name is Phil there too. So you could have the anchor Phil, or if you put the name there, you could put that in there too. I personally like to have the anchor, but that's your call. Okay. So let's say this script is done. Click off that. Let's go to story one. Okay. So let's say there's going to be a note I'm going to put in first. So I'm going to click on my note. So I've got instructions. Say, okay, uh, get uh, package number one queued up just as a note so that way we could see what's going to go on see how it's blue that means that it's not going to uh the teleprompter it's not going to be read by anybody except for the people that are in the control room so click off the note i can now go back to our production queue anchor i could then say you know again we could put fill two just so it's not confusing um, and I'll say, okay, so our package about, you know, um, shopping for the holidays. Um, today is the busiest time to shop for the holidays. Okay, that's our script. I know it's just getting through it. So you see how this is now uh, black, which means that's going to be in the teleprompter. Okay. Now, after this, after we've done writing the script of what we're going to be saying, maybe we'll throw it to the package, let's say. So in here, I'm going to put a, a production queue. 
I'm going to go to media time because this tells us how long the media is for the package itself. So all very important when you go to timing your show, but also gives an idea to as you're building your show, how long is the show going to be? So say media time for this is going to be one minute. And then I'm going to call and put a space by this and just put this is basically about holiday shopping is the package that we're going to be doing. Holiday shopping. Okay. Is our package. Okay. So that's story one. Note, anchor queue, and then media time. I'm going to just correct the spelling on that by simply right clicking on it. You can see a spell check directory in there too, which is a really nice tool in there. Again, you see that little red dot. Save. Now you'll see that's now red, and we're good to go. Okay. Story two, we're going to use sound on tape. So I'm going to click on this one. Again, double click. This pops open. Production queue will do anchor. I'm going to call this fill three. Okay. And maybe, you know, if there's a note about this, this is going to use sound on tape. Okay. Now, when you write a script that has sound on tape, it's important that you write what the person who you're interviewing says in the sound on tape so the anchor knows what's coming up in context. The people who are producing the show can see what's being said by the person that's being interviewed on tape. Um, so it's very important in every script where you're using sound on tape to write what the sound on tape is. So I'm going to go ahead and say... Um, continue the thought about holiday shopping. Um, this shopper says it's too busy, let's say. Okay. So that's what the anchor says leading into the sound on tape. So I could go ahead and put production cue. Take VO sound on tape. This is a good one to put there. If I just want to just say sound on tape, if there's no voice over ahead of it, take SOT, enter, and then I'm going to use sound on tape. I feel like the store is too busy. All right, not a compelling sound on tape, but you get the idea. But now look what's happened, though. That's now in green. So... The reason why it's in green is just so you could see quite visually, this is not what the anchor is going to say on camera. This is what's being said on the sound on tape. So the anchor could see what's going on. They could also read in the teleprompter as it's being said on tape for better context for the anchor or also put it on their script. So again, extremely important to put the sound on tape in your script so everybody has that ready for context. Okay, so what if I need to write a broadcast story but a rundown has not been created yet? So this is where having that folder named for the date of the show becomes so important at first. So let's go back to our running order manager. You could see back here in demo files, um, test show date, here's my test show, right, that we just created. So I have the folder here but I'm going to create a story I didn't realize there was a rundown or I have to create something I don't know where it's going to go in the rundown. So if I go, if we're going to write a broadcast story, click on the story browser, and I go to the folder for the show. So the show is still called Test Show Date and Year. Now you can see there's already four stories in there from our rundown, but I need to create a story and I don't know where it's going to go. So I'll do Create Story Broadcast. And I'll type in, this is called Extra Story. And I wanted to just, you know, write a little, you know, here is an extra story. Just so we have something there. Hit save. Click. Now, even though the story is in the folder, it's not in the rundown. So by simply bringing up the rundown... And I have the story here from the producer of the show. I could take that story, drag it, and put it where I want it to go. So let's say I'm going to go before weather. Put it as my extra story right there. 
Okay, so we'll pretend that our show is done. I know it's not a very compelling show, but we're going to go on to our next steps. So we've written our scripts, we've put our notes in, we've put in the sound on tapes as needed. So now we're going to have to add in the graphics for each part. Uh, especially important when you're doing packages, when you're doing your own name. We want to make sure it's everything spelled correctly. So who better to do the graphics than the author of the story itself? So... I'm going to close this right now, so you can see this is our rundown that we've got here. I'm going to go to our cold open, bring that script back up. So for a cold open, I'm going to need a graphic for my name when it comes up. So if you look over here for M, this it means MOS plugins. So these are anything that's uh, graphically tied to uh, any uh, our system that we want to add in. So we have a ROS expression plugin for creating our graphics in Inception. So we click on that. You may on, be on browse, but if you click on graphics, you'll see there'll be little thumbnails uh, of all the graphics we have available in the studio. We're not going to use all of these today. We're going to use a couple uh, more specifically, but this one I want to go to first, which is called Animation Bandwidth Lower and Transition. Double click on that, and that brings up a way for us to create this graphic. If you want to see what it looks like, there's a little preview here. You can drag the playhead if you'd like to see from the beginning, see what it looks like. You can see it's in three parts. So you can make sure everything's spelled correctly before it goes to air. Okay. So when we want to create a lower third for our name, banner heading and subheading are the first information that comes up in this animated graphic. Uh, name and Twitter are the second part of the graphic if you're going to be using a title and subtitle for your story. Since it's just going to be my name, I'm going to use banner heading to put my name in because that's going to be the first thing we're going to see. So I'm going to put Phil out here. And then subheading is going to be Twitter. So I'm going to put SBU Journalism. Now you can see right here, this is what the graphic is going to look like when it's sent to the system. We'll ignore name and Twitter because we don't need this part right now, but we will go to word transition. This is the name of the show. So the show we're going to be calling ourselves is this test show. Okay. So I could look at it here. I can see there's test show and there's my name right there. Okay. That's the second part there. So you can see this basically works really nicely. Test show. There's my name right there. Good. So if that looks good, everything's spelled right, I can then add it to our story. Now, if you click add to story, it will appear right here in the script. When it's, it's in your story, you don't need to click OK because you already did add it. You can then click cancel because you don't want to add it anymore. So if we're done, this is the only graphic we need. Click on cancel, and now you can see we have it in there already set up, and then hit save. Now this is ready to go to our system. If I want to double check, or if I'm the producer of the show and want to see what the graphic looks like, I just double click on it, and the graphic will pop up right there to see what's coming up. Okay? So that's putting in lower thirds. Let me close these out. But let's say we want to do a weather segment. I'm going to create a story right now for broadcast. I'm going to call this weather. Because you can create all the weather segments in here as well. So let me bring that down for weather. Double click on the script. I'm going to ignore this part of it because we've kind of gone through that already. But I want to show you what the graphic elements would be for this script. So again, I'm going to go to the M. Go to Ross Expression. And then I'm going to go to Graphics. And I'm going to go for today's forecast. For the weather, we have two graphics. This is weather right now with drop down and then weather extended. This is like a seven day forecast. We'll ignore this one for now because this is for a special monitor in the studio, which we rarely use. We're going to make some custom on this one. So this is for today's forecast. If I click on this, this has all the information I need for today's forecast. Right now, we could leave alone if that's what would be for right now. Weather description, you get a choice of what weather it is for today. So I'm going to choose clouds rain and sun the high temp 
I'm going to say is 55 degrees, low temp, 42. You can see everything changes over there. And then the winds will just say is north at 5 miles per hour. So all the information is right there. But what does it look like when it animates? Click the play button and say, drag this back, play. And now you'll see all my information is right there. Cloud, rain, and sun. All my information looks good. We can now add it to the story. Okay, now we're going to see what a seven-day looks like. I'll go through that quickly here. So click on graphics. You'll see that it's a seven-day forecast. Day one weather type. You basically choose the weather for the day. So I'm going to choose snow. So you can see what it looks like over here. See the template change over to snow. Day of the week one is Monday. That looks right. The high temp of day one, since it's snowing, maybe we'll say the high temp is 25. The low temp of day one is 15. Okay. Now you go to day two weather type. Make sure that's selected. We'll say that's sunny. See that's day two. So now you want to scroll down. Day of the week two, we're going to change that to Tuesday. Then you want to go to high temp two, meaning the high temp of day two. Say it's a little warmer. 40 degrees, and then the low temp for day two, we'll say is 31 degrees. You can see a little bit of a difference. There it is. And then basically you go through that for the remaining days of the week. If you want to see what the graphic looks like, bring the play it back to the head, hit play. And now you'll see what the weather graphic looks like to make sure it is the proper forecast that you wanted to have. When it's done, go ahead and click add to story. The instance is in there, so you don't have any more graphics to create. You click on cancel. Then you can see here where it's uh, a dot there. Even though we didn't type anything in, this is still considered a change. You've done something to this script. You've done something to this story. You need to save it in order for these weather graphics to get sent over. Okay, so that's doing the weather. Okay, so now we've done our test show. We created it from scratch, but certain classes have a certain style of show that you need to do week after week. You know, certain elements you have to prepare for because of that class is um, expectation. So let's go through uh, how to use templates real quick. I'll get rid of this for now. Make this all blank again. We'll go to our running orders manager. We'll go to, I'm going to go to my demo files. Now I need to create a new folder in here that even though I'm creating a show from a template, it's still a new show that has its own folder where people need to write to. So I'm going to create a new folder and I'm just going to call this TS for short for test show and then from template and then date and year. Okay, TS from template, click on that. See it's all blank, no running orders are in there. I've selected this folder to save it to. Now create running order. So from templates for Newsbrick for 216, I'm going to choose the bottom one uh, because this is going to be my class's Newsbreak show that we're going to do from a template. So you can see it fills in a lot of the important information. I could go ahead. It's a four minute show, which is correct. I'm going to go ahead and click on the date and choose the date of my class. It's going to do the show. We'll say it's the 25th. You'll see this also carried over. Duration-based, you can leave that check if you wanted to. Um, I'd take it off because we're not going to go to a specific time. It's an approximate in this particular class. Um, but everything else is all set up. You'll see most devices are all set up from the template. You don't need to do anything with that. Um, you're going to call your show. you got to rename it still. This is going to be uh, Newsbreak for Jan 25. Okay? Okay, so there it is. So there's my running order in the running orders manager in that folder. And here's all the items that I need to have as part of that show. I need my open, introduction, top story, national, international, local, and human interest, and then obviously the close. Okay, so this is great because now you know as a student who's got to do what story for the class. And if you're the producer of the show, you can go ahead and even assign students to who's going to do the top story, natural, natural, local, or human interest. So if I go to assignees, for instance, 
top story. I'm going to just choose me, fill out here, student demo. And then for local, maybe I'll just choose fill here. So you could see. So fill out here, student is assigned here to this story. Local story has fill out here. So it's all ready. You could plan out who's assigned to do what story. The open and the close are done by the anchor. And it was time to write your story. So say I'm doing a top story. Click on the slug, hit the space bar, delete top story, and say, you know, whatever the title is for top story. So you don't keep this as your title, but you know that's going to be your assignment for that particular story. Click on enter. If you're going to write it, double click on it. And now you can start to write your script. Okay. All right, so that's everything with doing a running order and writing a script for broadcast. Um, there'll be more videos and other aspects of Inception. But again, if you have any questions, feel free to put it in the comments or email your professor. Okay, till next time.